The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to today's Wednesday webinar. Today our topic is two or more heads are better than one and we're going to be talking about team planners and shared planners. So let's get going. Um, today on the call, my name is Paige Parker and I'm one of the training specialists here at Edgeforia. and I also have with me Joel Atkins. Joel, do you want to say hello? Hello. <laughs> Joel is going to be answering questions, so that brings me to the next item. There is a questions box in your menu for the webinar, and if you'll just type your questions in there, Joel will be answering them in the background, or he will be shouting out to me if, if I need to answer the question for the whole group, if he feels like everybody needs to hear it. So put your questions in there as we go, and... Um, and we'll try to get to all the questions and make sure you get something out of it that will be helpful to you. Before I jump into our topic, I do want to mention our upcoming training events. We've posted this in our online help section, so you can go in now to the training and webinars section of online help, and you'll find the upcoming Edgeforia conferences at the Educational Service Centers. These are some of the ones that are out there. When you get to the page, you'll see all of them listed there. And we just wanted to remind you, these are free trainings that your districts can participate in. So you can go to that page and register and see what sessions they have going on. We usually go, a couple, one or two of the trainers from Edgeforia will be there, as well as presenters from the service center and maybe from some of the districts as well. Or if you feel confident as a presenter, let your service center know because they're always looking for districts who want to present at their conferences. And then I also always like to mention at the beginning our online help resources. Again, this is where you can find the link if you go to help to those Edgeforia um, service center conferences, but you can also find everything that we're going to talk about today in the online help section. So there is an article about team planners and there's an article about shared planners that you can refer to as we go through today. Okay, so our agenda for today is to talk about shared planners and team planners. It's two different ways um, of sharing and neither one of them is one size fits all. So we're going to talk about the options that you have and hopefully you'll be thinking of things that you can do in your system that will make will work with one of these two methods. Um, sometimes shared planners are better for a group, sometimes team planners, it just depends. Shared planners are one-way sharing. It's not really collaborative. It's me showing you. It's more like a show and tell system. It's great for mentoring. It's great for modeling good lesson planning, but it's a view only situation. So I'm letting you view my stuff. I'm not letting you work on my stuff. The owner of the planner has all the control in a shared planner. So it, again, it's it's one way, it's not as collaborative. The team planners are collaborative. So it's great for teams that share the planning workload. If you work together well with your team and, and you say to your team members, hey, I'll do this part if you'll do that part and y'all share lesson pieces, then the team planner might be for you. Um, one of the things you have to think about with a team planner is that every team member has an equal level of control. So that that's not a bad thing, that just means that you need to communicate with your team members um, so that everybody knows what, what the plan is and who's doing what because we all have equal rights and we don't want to mess anything up. Okay, I'm going to start out with shared planners. And for some reason, there, there we go, shared planners. Um, we're going to go in and create a shared planner. I just want to say a couple things about them before we jump into the system. You don't ever have to share with principals. Principals already see the planners. So this is only for you to share with someone that's a teacher or someone who wouldn't necessarily see your planner already. Again, it's one-way sharing. If you want to see each other's, if you have a partner and you want to say, I'll share with you, if you share with me, then you both have to share because 
the sharing process is one way only. Sometimes you don't need to both share. Sometimes it's, it, it needs to be one way, and we'll look at one of those examples today. And then when you're viewing your shared planner, you can view any courses in the sharer's planner, but you can only print and copy plans from the courses that are the same. So if we don't teach the same courses, then I'm only gonna be able to view. I'm not gonna be able to print and copy. If we do teach the same courses, I'll be able to print and copy those plans as well. Okay, um, I'm going to jump over to a planner, and this is one of my my sample teachers. And you can see over on the left-hand side, and I will zoom in a little bit to make it easier to read, I hope. You can see on the left-hand side all the planners that I have. The one that belongs to me is always going to be called my lesson planner no matter what name I put into my schedule it's going to show up here in this list as my lesson planner so there's no confusion and then any planners that are shared with me are going to show up like this second planner here um, in this second planner I don't there aren't any lessons so it's going to show up as blank but you can see what it looks like when someone has shared their planner with me I can see it's also a personal planner because it's gold just like mine is all the personal planners are but this one is being handed off to me so that little blue thing is the cuff of somebody's sleeve as they are handing me their planner so that's how I know it's shared the gray planners are team planners and we'll come back and talk about them in a few minutes um, but this is a team uh, or a shared planner and when I'm looking at it right now if there were lesson plans I would be able to see them and I could come up here and print the plans if I wanted to right now I'm going to share my planner with another teacher and then we'll go in and look at what it looks like from that end. So I'm going to go to my planner and if I want to share with one of, let, let's say I am the mentor and I have a teacher that I am mentoring and I want to model good lesson planning for them. I can go down to the bottom of this pane to change my settings and there's an option that says share my planner. When I click on share my planner, all I have to do is go in here and add a teacher. So I'm going to say, this is the teacher that I'm mentoring. I click next, it'll show me everyone with that last name, and I can select the one that I'm going to share with and add that teacher. Okay, so he's in my list, and I'm going to say next, you're done. Um, I always want to make sure, even when it says you're done, I need to click on this button in the lower right hand corner that says return to planner because that saves everything and makes it stick. So now it doesn't change anything for me over here. It doesn't show me who I'm sharing with unless I go back to change my settings back to share my planner and then I can see the list of people that I'm sharing with. But what did change is for the teacher that I shared with. So I'm going to switch over to another teacher account and I'll go in this time as the teacher being mentored and you'll notice over here on the left hand side I can see that planner that was just shared with me so there's that shared planner I can go in and look and I'm gonna look at next week's lessons because I know there's stuff in there for next week so this is my mentor showing me her lesson plans I can look at those plans and see what a good lesson plan should look like this is modeling good lesson planning all of that stuff but I don't teach English I teach chemistry so all I can do is look and print these plans if I want to have them as examples but I can't use them in my lesson planner if we taught the same subject there would be a little icon up here and let me see if I can log in as another user um, who does have access to that Sorry, I forgot to have this one logged in. So this teacher, um, I'll go in and share that lesson planner again. So I'm back in to the original teacher. I want to add a teacher, type in that name. 
it gives me the choices which one did you mean this is the one I want to add so now I'm sharing my planner with Minerva is sharing her planner with two teachers when I go in and look at a teacher that teaches the same thing I can see Minerva's lesson plans so I can see what she has planned for next week and I can come over here and click on the course and I get these two little tools so in addition to being able to print from up here I could print this one course or I could say I want to use this in my planner I want to teach the same thing next Monday that my mentor is teaching so I can click on that date and I can say I want to use that in my planner okay now when I go to my lesson planner and I go to Monday's date there is the lesson plan that I borrowed or copied from my mentor who shared their plans with me when I go in and look at the plans in the shared planner I can't get a flashing cursor I can't edit them even on a date when there is an actual plan in there I have no flashing cursor I have no way to edit this plan at all so the recipient of the planner can't make any changes this is not really a collaborative effort they are just showing me their plans and I can use them I can do whatever I want to with them once I bring that plan into my planner so now I'm in my personal planner with that copy of the lesson now I can get a flashing cursor and I can make whatever changes I want so if I wanted to do a different warm-up activity I could delete the warm-up activity from the lesson that I pulled in and I could write my own warm-up activity so I can edit however I want to to make this lesson my own once I bring it in from that shared planner but if I am a teacher who does not teach that same subject um, I am looking at an English one lesson but when I click on the box there's no way for me to send it in because I don't have the same course that she has I don't teach the same thing so I can't put that lesson into my planner because my planner doesn't contain English one it only contains chemistry so the shared planners are designed just to show and maybe to borrow I always compare it to my first year teaching when teachers on my team would bring me folders of stuff and I would go copy it and then I would take the warm-up from one person and the activity from another person and build my own lessons from those materials that's what a shared planner is all about it's also great in those circumstances where you might have a case manager for some special ed kids and that case manager needs to see your lesson plans in order to be able to help the students when they come to content mastery or whatever it's called um, to help you know to tutor them but they don't necessarily need to write their own plans or even help with your plans you can share the planner with them they can see what you're doing and then they can use that to help those students any questions about shared lesson plans I have not seen any questions come in yet Paige I think you're doing okay. spectacular the only <laughs> question I've had is it someone asked if I had created this demo because of the Harry Potter references no I'm the Harry Potter nerd yeah you are <laughs> <laughs> well I mean there's there's I'm sure more than one of us on the team but yeah I'm the one who this is my demo site so I have Harry Potter people in my demo site my principal is Dumbledore in my demo site now we're okay. getting comments someone asked can you unshare a shared planner that is an excellent question because you want to unshare a shared planner remember I said that in a shared planner the owner of the planner has all the control so I'm in a snape right now and McGonagall shared her planner with me I can't un I can't get rid of that I can't say yeah I don't want to see that anymore I have no control over that planner it I didn't didn't have any control when it was shared with me I have no control over getting it unshared with me so what should happen at the end of the year is that everybody should unshare their planners that way if let's say McGonagall um, over the summer 
something happens and she moves out of district, I'm still going to see her lesson planner. I'm still going to see her name in my list because I was stuck in the shared planner rut. So what should happen at the end of each um, each year is that I should go in again to change my settings, share my planner. I should look at the teachers that are there and click and say remove teacher, remove teacher, and then go through the whole wizard. And now when I go back in as either, you do a refresh, this teacher, or if I go back in as Snape, do a refresh, then that shared planner is gone now from the list. So the, the way to share or unshare is the same. I go to change my settings, share my planner, and then I can add or remove teachers from the list. And what I want at the end of each school year is to have nobody shared. I don't want any shares going on in my planner. So it should be blank. At the beginning of next year, if I'm mentoring that same teacher or if that teacher's is, or that person is going to be the case manager for me again and I need to share my planner with them again, it's just a couple clicks to add them back in there. But because all of the control resides with the sharer, they need to clear it out at the end of each year. Good question. Okay, I'm going to talk about team planners now. So I am, when I look at my lesson planner, I'm a chemistry teacher. Maybe I work really well with my team and we plan together. Team planners can be created by any teacher. Um, one of the things to talk about here is that only one team member needs to create the planner. So if you have a team of four people, you don't want all four people going in there and creating the team. Then you have four planners and that's not what you want. So you, again, communication is crucial, especially with the team planners. We need to decide, we're gonna do a team planner. I'm gonna be the captain, I'll start the team. I'll add everybody else on there. And then everyone needs to know that they have equal control so that nobody accidentally does anything. You wanna make sure that, that everybody understands their role. Um, it will autosave and you can check the planner back in. It's not like Google Docs where we, you can all be in at the same time. There's a check out and edit button that I'll show you in just a few minutes. But the, the key things to remember here is that if you remove the people from the team, like we just did with the shared planner, if I took all the people out of a team planner, then the team planner gets deleted and all the lesson plans that were in it will be deleted and there is no undo. So that's the bad news. You want to make sure that, that they, you always leave somebody in the planner so that you don't accidentally delete all your lessons. The good news is that you're going to use a feature called Copy Week and it's going to copy everything into your personal planner so you don't really lose them all, you just lose them from the team planner. You'll still have them in your personal planner because you want to put it in your personal planner so that you that's where you get credit for your lesson plans. That's where your administrator is going to look for your plans. And also, you'll be able to individualize there. Okay, I'm going to jump back in and create a team. So I have a, I have a team planner here that we're going to use in a few minutes, but I'm just going to walk through and show you how you would set one up. So I'm in my planner and I would go to create new team. And I get a wizard just like everything else. I'm going to walk through step by step. I have to give it a name. So maybe I'm going to create a name that's just for chemistry. And it automatically adds me as a team member because I created the team. But then I would go in and find the rest of my, uh, the other teachers that I have. I'm just going to go in and show that when you type in a last name, it'll give you all the people that have that last name and then you can pick. That's just a faster way of finding them sometimes than trying to figure out what their email address is. Once I have all of my members, I can go on, click the next button. I can always come back and add additional team members later. Sometimes people create the team and get it all set up and then they have a team meeting and talk about it and then they put their members in so that it doesn't show up and freak everybody out before they even know what's going on. So I, don't, I can come back anytime to add more members. 
I'm going to click the next button and unlike a shared planner where I'm just showing what I have so it doesn't matter what courses I have or what courses you have in this case we're collaborating so we need to have this we need to have courses in common so I have to add my courses just like I did when I created my schedule for my personal planner at the beginning I'm going to click on the add a course button I'm going to go into the high school folder and I'm going to go to science and since this is my chemistry planner I'm going to add the chemistry course in and say next now you can create a planner that has more courses in it and I did here with my high school science planner that we'll look at in a few minutes or I can create a planner for a single course it depends on what your team looks like I might have a district-wide chemistry team and I might have a campus-wide high school science team and I might be members of both teams so you can you can create whatever configuration of team planners you want I'm just gonna for this one create my one course and say next and I'm done again I always have to remember to hit that return to my planner button that's down in the lower right hand corner and now I'm gonna have another planner showing up here in the left hand side so whatever planner I have highlighted that's what I'm looking at if I go to my chemistry planner that I just created I can create lessons here I can create lessons in the high school planner or I can create lessons in my personal planner this chemistry planner only has one course but if I go to the high school science planner I have biology chemistry integrated physics and chemistry and physics so this is a planner for my whole campus maybe my science department head is monitoring the team planner so they want to see all the courses in one place if I work on this team and I only teach chemistry when I copy it into my planner only chemistry is going to come to me even though there will be biology lessons there there will be IPC lessons there there will be physics lessons there only the courses that match what's in my planner will copy over so anything from this chemistry section will copy into my planner in my chemistry section I don't have a section for biology or IPC or physics so I'm not going to get those lessons if I had two preps and one of them was from the high school science planner and maybe my other prep was social studies if I was a member of the social studies planner I could get some courses from that one so you can be a member of multiple planners you can get lessons from multiple planners it's just gonna match up what is in that planner that team planner with what I have in my planner okay differences between the team planner and the personal planner <clears throat> when I click on the course box in a team planner there's a tool that's not there in your personal planner and it's this one right here that looks like a piece of paper with a pencil on it pencil is usually an edit icon and that's what it is in this case when I float my mouse over that icon the tooltip says check out an edit lesson so you'll notice just like in the shared planner oops just like in the shared planner when I click I don't get a flashing cursor at all in this team planner until I check it out for editing I'm gonna say check out and edit yes I'm sure I want to do that now I can come in here and type my warm-up activity I can type whatever I want to I can come in and add standards into the lesson from my curriculum pane over on the right so I have full functionality for this one course while I have it checked out somebody else can be working on IPC at the same time that I'm working on chemistry somebody else can be working on biology at the same time that we're working on chemistry and IPC one person per course on any given day so if I'm working with multiple chemistry teachers um, maybe I'm gonna say I'll go in and do all the objectives if you'll go in and do all of the assessment pieces we would need to make sure we're not stepping on each other's toes so right now that edit icon is not visible if somebody came in and tried to do their part they wouldn't be able to because I have it checked out as soon as I click the Save button it puts that icon back 
Now I'm not editing anymore and somebody else from the team could go in and edit that date. I could be in chemistry on Monday while somebody else is in chemistry on Tuesday or somebody could be in another course on the same day that I'm in, but we can't be working in the same day, same course at the same time. So we have to do the checkout, check-in process for that. The second thing that's different about a team planner is this little talk bubble up here, which is a discussion board. And if you have common planning time and you are all in the same room at the same time, you may not need this discussion board. But as a secondary teacher, I did not have common planning time with my team and I usually did my plans at home at night. So this would have been helpful. I can go into the discussion board and create a new thread and maybe the thread is gonna be are we done yet? And this is going to be a thread where the department head tells us that the lesson plans are approved and ready to copy into our personal planners. Maybe I'll have another thread that was created that's just going to be called chemistry. So we have different threads going in there. Um, if I was the one who was doing the chemistry lessons and somebody else was doing biology, I could click here and reply. And you can do it a couple of different ways. I can put the content down here in the comment, but I actually like to put it up here and you'll see why when I'm done, because it, it's visible and it, it's less clicks. So I could say um, week of 924 is done and save it. And so now you can see for that thread, I'm telling everybody that lesson plan is done. Now my department head could go in and we're gonna pretend like I'm the department head for a second and reply and say 9, 24 through 28 is okay to copy. So now I know that I'm, we're done with chemistry or we're done with the whole week and I can go ahead and copy that into my planner. So those messages kind of help you keep track if you don't have the ability to do, to plan together and be in the same room. For me, I would want to know when this, when this message came through. Um, and I can know just by going in and checking anytime and see, you know, have they, have they said it's okay yet? But I can also go up to the wrench on the threads and say, email me when a new post is added. And then I'll get an email that will have that title that tells me it's okay to copy. So I'll be able to see that my department head has approved those lessons and I can go in and do my copy. Because the team planner is basically like a rough draft. I work together with everyone on it. We get everything ready to go. And then I'm going to put the final copy in my personal planner. And that is the third difference. Um, I'm going to go into the week of October 1st and I'm going to go to the view weeks plans because the third difference between a team planner and the personal planner is this button up at the top that says copy week. It's to the left of the copy wizard button and it only shows up when you're in a team planner in the week view. Now biology, I didn't do any lessons yet, but chemistry, you can see, has some lesson plans in there. And I wouldn't wanna do this if I was pulling multiple plans, multiple subjects from this team planner, but since I'm just pulling chemistry, it's okay for me to do this. Chemistry is done for the week. All I have to do is say I want to copy week. It's one click, so I'm gonna say copy week, okay. Now I want to go back to my lesson planner and in that same week, October 1st through October 5th, I now have those lesson plans that were created in the team planner. Now they're in my personal planner. Now I can go to my plans. I'm gonna double click on Monday. That's how you get out of the, the week view and back to the day view or course view. I'm going to go back to my plans and I would go in and look at what accommodations or modifications do I need to add in for my students 
Do I need to make any changes to the homework based on the specific students that I have? Or do I need to add something in about the differentiation strategies that I'm using or technology that I'm using? Those things might be different for me from other teachers on my team because of the students that I have. So I have the ability to bring the lesson plan in from the team and then tweak it a little bit to make it specific to my kids. So I, those are the three differences between a team planner and a personal planner. I have to check them out and check them in. I have the ability to do a discussion board within um, the course. I'll need to be in biology for that one. Um, and then when I go to the week's view, I also have the copy week button, which will copy everything in. Now there's one thing that's key to making this work smoothly. And that is, in my lesson planner, I do not want to click on any of the days of the week that I'm about to copy. I want them all to be not bold. Because anytime I click on a day, if I go back to today's date, there's no lesson plan here, but there is a template, a blank template. So if I copied a week from the team planner into my planner, it would put the team lesson below this template. And I would have to come in and delete the template out to move the lesson up to the top. That's not really a big deal, but if you have to do it every single day of the week, that might be annoying. The way to avoid it is don't click on the day, don't make it bold, until after you've copied the week in. So if I'm looking at the month of October, right now, the 8th through the 12th is not bolded. I've not stamped it. There's no template on any of those dates. If I copy from the team planner before I click on any of those dates, then it will come in just as clean as this week did with nothing at the top that I have to delete out. So we do that, get that question frequently, why is the template duplicated? That's because somebody clicked on that date, stamped it with the template, then when they copied the, the lesson plan in, Edgephoria never assumes that you want to overwrite or delete anything that you have in your planner. It can't tell that it's just a blank template. It just knows that you have something in there and it won't delete it for you. So it will append it to the bottom and then you have to delete that that blank template out. So the key to not having to do that is don't click on any days in the week until after you've copied it from the team planner. I'm going to go into my team planner, do all of my week work there, and then when I'm ready I'll copy it over, but I will never click on those dates in my personal planner until after I've copied it over. And Paige, I just wanted to reiterate that, that that is a common question that we get into our support is how Absolutely. teachers, I mean, it's one of those, if I had a dime for every time, <laughs> I would retire. But uh, that is something that happens often is that the teachers are clicking on those days and it's putting that template in there. And I think your explanation of that was really good. And And you just have to be deliberate about which planner am I on before I click on any days, make sure that I'm in the team planner, and then I'll come down to the date that I want to work on and get all, everything done in the team planner, and I'm not going to switch back to my personal planner until after I have copied those plans in. And then the second thing that we get most often is that someone went in to change team settings, and they went to add remove members and they deleted people out of the team. Once that last team member is deleted, then that team planner is gone and all the lessons that are in that team planner are gone. However, even if I deleted my team plan right now, if I go to my personal lesson planner and I go to next week, I've got those lessons there. So I didn't lose them in my personal planner I only lost the team planner. That's why it's so very important for teachers to copy their plans into their personal planner 
for one thing, this is where the administrators are going to go first. They can get to team planners, but it's not as, as direct. And so they're going to look in your personal planner to see what you've done. And they want it to be personalized because they want to see that you have created modifications and differentiation based on your individual students. So copying it into your personal planner is important, and that also gives you sort of a backup of those plans. The last thing that hey Paige, I recommend, yes, sir. Uh, I was just going to ask a question that came in this uh -huh. is from Ron. What is the relationship between team planner teams and team test teams? The, the, the teams, that, that's a very good question, Ron. The teams that you create for a team planner will automatically exist in AWARE and can become teams for testing. So the, the more groups that start doing team testing, they're going to, they'll be able to do team planning as well. So if I create a team here, that, that team will be accessible in AWARE for team testing. Now, I may not want to do my high school team in testing because it has biology, chemistry, and everything. I may want to have those individual teams for all my individual subject areas be the ones that I use to create my tests. But I can be a member of both teams, therefore I can work whichever way is more convenient for me. Okay, the last little tidbit that I wanted to share, and this is just a personal recommendation. After I have copied those lessons in from my team, and I'm looking at a full week's worth, and just because I'm not sure who all knows and who doesn't, I'll show you this as well. The default view and forethought is the one up here that has a little one on it, which means I'm looking at one day at a time. In my case, it's one day, one prep, because I am one of those lucky one prep teachers or SNAPE is, but I also have a view where I can see plan by course, and if I go to plan by course, even though I only have one course, what I will see is a whole week on one page of just my, my one prep. It'll let me choose, if I had multiple preps, I could choose between them from this drop down, but in my case, I only have one, but I can see Monday through Friday all on this one page just by scrolling down. I can also go to view week's plans and see the week. Um, the one thing I like to point out is the naming up here. You have plan by course, plan by day, view week's plans, go back to your Sesame Street days. One of these things is not like the other because view week's plans is not a fully functional planner. Um, when I'm in the view by course and I'm looking at a week at a time by scrolling down, I still have my course box, I still have my curriculum pane, I can add teaks, I still have all my tools up here at the top so I can add anything to the lesson and I can add attachments from this view. If I go to the view weeks plans where I see it in a grid, there's no curriculum pane over on the right so I can't add teaks. Not only can I not add them, I can't even view them because all of these lessons have teaks with them and they don't show on the week view. I don't have very many of my tools up here at the top and I cannot add attachments. So this view was designed to sort of be a snapshot so that I can look and say, okay, yes, I do have a lesson every day this week. I didn't leave any blanks. Oops, there's a typo. Let me correct the typo right there. But that's really all it was designed for, that and the copy wizard that's what the week view is for. What I want is to be in that either the day view or the course. I want to be in plan by day or plan by course so that I can see everything. And then my recommendation is after I've copied my weekend, I want to go up to my print button and I want to say print week to word. And it's going to generate a word file that I can open up and look at. It is an editable document. My word is being slow to open. Um, it's an editable document, but there it is. And I could scroll through and see all of my plans for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You can see everything. I recommend that teachers do this print week to Word and then put it in a Google Drive. Put it on a network directory. Put it on an external hard drive, whatever you have as a storage device just save this and I would save it as either week of October 1st or week 
14 or whatever it was in the year, just so that I have a copy, a backup copy of my lesson plans um, for that instance where, you know, maybe something happens and I have to move and I go to a district that doesn't have Edgephoria, or maybe they do, but I just need to bring my lesson plans in. I will have a copy of those lesson plans that is editable so that I could copy and paste stuff from here and put it in my new district. So that's just a recommendation. There's not an export button anywhere in Forethought where you can export your whole lesson planner all at once. Um, so I recommend doing it as print week to Word and just making that part of the process. I'm going to work on my lesson plans in the team planner. I'm going to go into view weeks plans and use the copy week button to copy them into my planner. And then I'm going to go into my planner and I'm going to say print week to Word and save that somewhere as a backup. And again, Paige, I just want to say that's that's another great thing to remind teachers to do at the end of the school year. And maybe we go with Absolutely. that more when we get closer to the end of the school year because we get, oh my goodness, it's so many requests from teachers who have either transferred to another district or to another place and then they lost access to their planner. And they'll ask us to go into their previous district to get their lesson plans. And, and that's not something we do. I mean, that's yeah. that's a huge security issue. We, we tend to not get into people's systems to pull data because that's your district data. That's your information. So it's, it's a hard answer to give to a teacher who's it left is. years and years and years of work in a planner when they've left and they're wanting us to – get the access for them. That's why it's just, it's it's like, how many clicks? One, two, it's two clicks <laughs> to save that document somewhere that I can take it with me and have it as a backup. I would, two clicks and then I'm gonna, gonna wanna save it somewhere. So it, it, it just needs to become part of the process and that's one of my recommendations when I do training. Any final questions? Um, I'm watching. I'm not seeing any questions. I'll keep it open here to see if anyone says anything. Well, if if questions bubble up after we sign off today, you can always email us at training, T-R-A-I-N-I-N-G, training at edgeforia.net, and one of the trainers will get back to you to answer your question. And before you go... Uh, would you mind going to our help section? Not where at all. Upcoming I will go into are? Forethought, and I will click on the help button because that's one of the ways that you can get to it. <laughs> You're getting a lot of praise in the comments right now. Both <laughs> Dixie and Ron are singing your praises right now. <laughs> so from the online help, the training and webinars button, Joel has reorganized, and we hope this is going to be a little more user-friendly for you. The training and webinars button is up top. So all of those things that you're looking for that are in general are in the top row now. And then it starts with our instructional applications on the second row and then our logistical applications on the third row. But you can go into training and webinars. And then over on the right-hand side, you'll see the upcoming Edgephoria conferences, the ESC conferences. So um, this is the flyer that um, Felicia created. We're, we kind of have a theme for the year with our ESC conferences, begin with the end in mind. Um, so we're, we're going to focus our sessions around that. And then as you go through and scroll, you'll find all of the different service centers, their dates are posted out there. And then if, if you find your service center and you want to register, you can click on a register button right there and get yourself signed up. So that's where you will find all of the service center stuff that's coming up. And then also under training webinars, you will find upcoming webinars here over on the left-hand side. And we do have a few scheduled and a couple more coming soon. So the next one coming up will be Tuesday, October 2nd. And that's going to be next level test authoring in AWARE. So that's going to be the, the new stuff that you'll get to see. And then we have a form space session on the 3rd, which is our, our typical Wednesday. This one's on a Tuesday, but we do have one that Wednesday as well. It's going to be about form space workflows and sections. 
we have a grab bag of tricks and treats on Halloween and it's going to include multiple applications so we'll have several things out there then. So we've got those ready to go and you can register for them when you go to our online help section. Yeah, and that one, that the uh, very bottom one there, I'll be doing that one, which is the trick or treat grab bag uh, tips and tricks. And if you have ideas or you want to share something that you're doing that's incredible, uh, just contact us through training at eduphoria.net, and I'm going to find you <laughs> and get you to be part of that webinar with me because it's really about just sharing shortcuts, ideas. Uh, tips, strategies, cool things you're doing in the applications, and instead of just listening to me talk, because you know no one really wants that, um, we, we want to hear from everybody. Yeah, we can all be sharing together. That's right, because everybody has different ways of looking at things, and maybe some different trips, tricks to share. All right, well, thank you for your time this afternoon. And again, if any questions do come up, training at edgeforia.net, and we hope to see you again next time.